Hi, uh, this is a video on rural land degradation in North Africa uh, for higher pupils. What is rural land degradation? Essentially, this is when we damage or degrade the land in rural or countryside areas. So what is RLD? Sometimes you'll hear me say RLD, sometimes you'll hear me say desertification. Um, what's important is that you realise that these are interchangeable terms. You can read the text on the screen for yourself, so just pause the video and read it. You could also copy it out as revision notes. In the picture on the screen, you can see on the right hand side that um, the desert is healthy desert. And on the left hand side, the desert is not healthy desert. There is in fact a fence going down the uh, the middle. And what's happened here is that the left hand side has been overgrazed by animals. The animals have eaten all of the plants and therefore their roots have structure has gone. And this means that the wind and the rain can wash and damage and blow away the topsoil. The topsoil is where all the nutrients are and that's how healthy desert, which you see on the right hand side, turns into um, degraded land, damaged land. And what you need to be able to explain to the examiner is how does um, this landscape on the left impact the lives of people who are living here? And secondly, how can we return the land on the left to the quality that you see of the land on the right? In these pictures, you can see that um, here, for example, there is a dust cloud which is blowing off the uh, coast of uh, Africa. Uh, this is the coastline of Africa, highlighted here in yellow. This is the coastline of Spain, South Spain and North Africa. And um, as you can see, there is a large cloud of dust getting blown off the top of Africa. This is topsoil, nutritious topsoil. Once it's gone, it never comes back. And that means that where that topsoil is blown away, no food can be grown. In the top right, you can see topsoil that's blown and buried a car in the famous 1930s Dust Bowl in North America. Down in the bottom right, you can see dust clouds being blown off East Africa this time, expanding the size of the deserts here, um, reducing the amount of farmable land. And in the bottom left here is a sandstorm blowing in across from the Gobi Desert in China, just showing that this is a global problem, not just an African problem. The over farming is tiring the land out and causing the topsoil to blow away. Once it's gone, it won't come back and you cannot farm the land anymore. Okay. This image will loop continuously uh, and it shows the topsoil being blown off of the Sahara Desert and circulating the globe. And it's a truly terrifying problem. So what are the reasons for rural land degradation? Well, they fall into uh, a few simple categories really. The first is overpopulation. This is the average family size that you see in North Africa. Astounding, isn't it? Family sizes like that exist to provide workforce and care for the elderly. Um, clearly, babies need fed, and to produce enough calories to raise children, you need to farm the land intensively. The more children you have, the more intensive farming you need to do in order to produce the calories to wean all of the babies. Interestingly, one of the best uh, and most calorific um, things you can produce is cow milk. So cattle farming is very common in, the, in areas with high population and cattle are one of the most damaging things to the land itself. Once the land has been completely tired out and had all of its plant life stripped from it by cattle, um, the land can be used for nothing else and can grow no food and healthy children will turn into famine victims. Over farming is our next big cause. Because we've got all those mouths to feed, you see situations like this on the right hand side. This is pure desert. 
and it is actually quite an unusual thing on the face of the earth. This here in the bottom of the picture is marginal land and marginal land is a term we will use later and it refers to the land on the edge of a desert that is still technically farmable but it is dying and you can see the quality of this soil is not good and the farmer who is farming it is getting every last inch of nutrition out of the soil and in another season or another two seasons that soil will just be dead and it cannot grow anything more and it too will be desert. So over farming tires the soil out. Overgrazing is a really serious problem. I talked about cows a moment ago. Overgrazing will turn a lush green desert environment like you see in this picture to one that looks like this. They strip away all of the grass and foliage which protects the, the land and that means that wind and rain can just wash away the topsoil very, very easily. Cattle are really, really destructive. So where is desertification? You will refer to uh, a case study. You must have a case study in your answer. And the first case study to know about is the Sahel region. The Sahel region is a band of marginal land that we find between the Sahara Desert here the largest of the world's deserts, and the farmable strip of land to its south. Within the Sahel region lies the country of Burkina Faso and its capital city, Ouagadougou. So how does the whole process work? Here are your five main factors. Pause the video to note these down. Okay. The SQA will ask you to give answers to the impacts of desertification. Listen to me lecture you through these notes, then pause the video, copy the notes down, and then test yourself by recreating them as either a model answer or uh, by producing the mind map from memory. You're being asked to explain how the destruction of land and the creation of deserts impacts on the lives and the environment in these areas in North Africa. Explain the impact of desertification. So, the first impact is that topsoil blows away. Um, this creates dust storms and sandstorms like you saw in the photos earlier. The second impact is that there's always going to be more of a strain on the marginal land. As the deserts grow in size, that means there's less farmable land and that means there's more pressure on food resources. So you really want to talk about how as the desert grows, this places more pressure on the remaining marginal land. Three, migration of people. Because the desert is growing in size, this actually forces all the people who were living on the marginal land to move south. This has caused cities like Ouagadougou to become overcrowded and has caused slum growth. To score this mark, you really need to link the migration of people to the growth of slums. Another group of people called nomads, who traditionally move around the landscape following the seasons, uh, these guys have been forced out of the desert, marginal lands, and forced to move into cities. And that is a, a real shame. You can score a mark here for talking about the loss of their native culture, their loss of nomadic culture. A nomad is someone who traditionally moves around the landscape following their herds of cattle. Next is that the naturally occurring supplies of water that live in the ground, that take thousands of years to build up, are being drained very, very quickly. Groundwater supplies are being very rapidly drained. They won't last beyond the end of the century. Of course, as you've seen in pictures, one of the impacts of the loss of farmland is hunger, starvation and famine. I've put all these three labels together, so to remind you that you can't score separate marks with these. Hunger, starvation, famine and thirst, they're all the same. Countries that suffer from rural land degradation, which remember is the same as desertification, uh, we're going to become dependent on foreign aid money to help them buy essentials like food. Roads and houses and essential infrastructure like train tracks get buried in sandstorms. 
and that actually really makes it difficult for people to move around the country. There's a high likelihood of conflict. If you look at a map of the world now, you will see that there is a North and a South Sudan. This split was because of a brutal civil war, uh, which arguably was fought over a shortage of resources in the area, which can directly be linked to the desertification of the land. Uh, finally, the Sahara Desert itself grows in size. Now there's 10 marks on the screen. You may find more in your classroom notes. What you want to do now is pause the video, copy this mind map down and then see if you can memorize it. Okay, solutions to desertification. This is the second of two questions you can be asked. The first question was the impacts of desertification. Now we're looking at the solutions to it. How do we solve it? Now your notes will have many solutions. I'm going to focus on three in this video. The first is called stone walls. You may see these variously called magic stones or even uh, digettes, which is the French word for it, but we'll call them stone walls. They're a very simple idea to explain. Here is a slope and the water flows over the slope. You have to imagine that um, some stones are piled up at the bottom of the slope. The water now runs off just as before and it passes through the stones but the soil that the water was carrying with it is trapped behind the stones and over time it, l it, it forms a brand new level field. That's really important because the rain that falls now will hit a horizontal surface and will therefore infiltrate and sink into the ground and be trapped in the soil. You can see this explained below. Notice also though that I have included notes on why this is an effective technique. You will score marks for being able to not only explain how the technique is done but explain why it is effective. This is one of the most effective ways of stopping soil getting washed away and that's because it's simple and cheap. You can see in the picture, there's no specialist equipment needed. Pictorial instructions or even the word of mouth can be used to explain how it's done. But some other things you can say, for example, are that it only works in areas where the slope is relatively gradual and it only works in areas where there's a ready supply of stones. Without the stones, you can't do the technique. Okay, technique two, afforestation. In theory, this should be the cure to the problem. Basically, as you can see in, the, in the, uh, the picture here, there's something called the Great Green Wall Initiative. At the moment, this is just an idea. It's not been attempted. Uh, and the idea is to plant trees along this 6,000 kilometer line across the Sahara Desert. As you can probably hear from the tone of my voice, I don't consider this a very likely solution. However, if it was possible, it would work brilliantly. And the reason is, is that trees, once they've planted and established themselves, their shade that they provide actually stops evaporation. So that keeps the, the soil moist. The trees break up the wind, stopping it blowing away any dry topsoil that there is. And the trees have roots which hold the soil together and keep it down. So those are three mark scoring reasons why trees are a brilliant solution. However, unfortunately, trees are also noted because they're slow to grow. They take years to grow. And this is not a single line of trees that you're looking at here. This yellow line that you see on the screen represents up to a few hundred metres depth of trees along a 6,000 mile um, journey across the desert through notable areas of war and conflict. This is not a practical solution. And you can see that I've commented on that down here. It's basically unrealistic because it's too expensive, too kind time consuming, too much investment, and just the sheer size of the project makes it impracticable. You must have an understanding of how the technique works and why it is effective. These are two separate sets of notes you're being taught. Finally, a nice simple one to end on. Contour ploughing. Contour ploughing is actually a remarkably modern technique. It's amazing that it took um, farmers so long to realise how to do it in the Western world. In Asia and South America, most notably, uh, farmers have known how to do this for thousands of years. 
Um, it's logical if you've got a plow and a cow to pull the plow that you would let the plow pull the plow, uh, sorry, the cow pull the plow uphill and gravity pull the plow downhill. However, what this actually creates is ready made chutes for the water to flow down. So instead, what we do is we plow in a spiral all the way round the hill. And that creates ridges over which the surface runoff can't flow so easily. And as a result, more water is infiltrated into the soil. And as a result, less soil is lost. The key things to mention here are the increase of infiltration. Uh, but however, it's notable that contraplower, though it's simple to do, it's very simple to do, it's very simple to explain, it only works where there's a gradient. It only works where you've got hills. So on flatter landscapes, it's, it's not a useful technique at all. Okay, uh, that's really the end of this mini lesson on uh, rural land degradation and desertification. Your notes contain way more details, so make sure you're checking them. Be aware that you're only preparing for two exam questions. What are the impacts of rural land degradation? And what are the solutions to rural land degradation? And um, I think that's really all I need to say there. Um, I hope you find this useful and uh, let me know if there's anything else that I can do to help you revise.